But this is a really good update, guys. Do we, like, start playing Viper or some shit? All right, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Cool. So this is Valorant Passionates 2.06. With Masters behind us, it's time to get working on this promised Viper and Yoru changes. Detailed Details are below, but remember that we'll keep a close eye on how these play out once they're live. Oh my goodness. Bucky, look at your nerf. Let's fucking go get that shit out of the game. Viper. In the wake of Masters, we're introducing some bigger updates to our agents with Viper first in line. We looked at a lot of possible changes for her, but ultimately landed on changes that pushed what makes Viper's play pattern unique and still resonate with her theme. When compared to other controllers, we want Viper to make big, committed decisions that truly alter the map and, and how both sides plan around her influence. That's interesting. I like. I always like seeing like what their thoughts are behind an agent, because that that lets you know like what they think, where the direction of the game should be going, right? Like the, these sentences are actually like a lot. They mean a lot to like their intentions and what they, what you should expect moving forward. Uh, she should claim ground with force and dare opponents to challenge her. The updates to Toxin should also project more threat on enemies who consider pushing her smoke and will hopefully add a significant bite to her marquee toxic screen paired with a couple other buffs and some new tools for le for learning and practicing lineups what is the new tools for learning and practicing lineups that's interesting we're excited to see if viper can deliver on the deadly impact she promises while solidifying her spot on our roster okay the toxin this is just the uh, this is this is like toxin for those of you that don't play viper that's like the the fuel right that's what operate that's what is used to operate the poison cloud and the toxin screen it has nothing it's not like an item in her kit it's it's like the gas enemies that cross through viper's poison cloud toxic screen or viper's pit are instantly inflicted with at least 50 decay their decay level increases the longer they remain in contact with toxin while in cloud, DK hat over time decreased from 15 to 10 seconds. DK over time increased, decreased. What does that mean? Does that mean you go at 1 at 10 seconds from 150 instead of 1 from... You must, because the second you go in, you lose 50. 50 is one third of 150. So we take off 5. Yeah. So nothing really changed other than this sentence. This sentence is very important. Uh, when out of Viper's Cloud, delay before health regen decreased from 2.5 seconds to 1.5 seconds. So you basically get your health back quicker. You lose health quicker, you get back health quicker. The whole process is just sped up because the game is moving way too fast. Let's be real. Viper, Viper is like fucking playing a pace of the game that's just not possible. So they're trying to speed up her gameplay with stuff like this. Poison Cloud can now be immediately redeployed when picked up, but grants a temporary charge instead of a permanent charge. Huh. If active when Viper dies, Poison Cloud now remains, up, now remains up for an additional two seconds or until Viper runs out of fuel. Pick up distance increase from 200. Wow, so you can pick that shit up from 400 meters away? Wait, what? What does that even mean, pick up distance? You couldn't pick it up 200 meters away before. What does this even mean? I don't even know what this means. But this is a big change, because you know, Viper's smoke was just so bad. It was by far the worst smoke in the game. It, it, it wasn't even debatable. It's so clunky, and she only gets one of them, and if you fuck it up, you can't get it back, and... If they don't come your way, just going pick it up is a huge risk. So this is like actually a big change in my eyes for Viper. Toxic screen. If active when Viper dies, toxic screen now remains up for an additional two seconds before deactivating. Full blind distance from the wall increased to better match the blind distance from the edge of smokes. Yeah. So you remember how... Um, Full blind distance. This this actually matters a lot, especially when you look at. Um, I guess since we're doing this now, I mean we could do stuff like this. No, I feel like Viper's bad. 
is good in EU because people respect the like the Viper wall like across, right? But in this like region, no one cares. They just like fucking run through that shit <laughs> or like dart and then swing. You know what I mean? It's true. In NA, people disrespect the Viper wall all the fucking time. So the fact that they're what they're doing is they're increasing the full blind distance. So as you run through the Viper wall, you're gonna be blind for a little bit longer from running through a smoke. I mean, I know it's not technically a smoke, but that's how it kind of activates as. Um, so that's what they're trying to go for there. That'll make her wall more powerful. In addition to all this other stuff making her more powerful. So, uh, yeah. These are insane. Snake bite. Equip time decreased. 1.1 seconds to 0.8. Doesn't seem significant, but when you look at the ratio of like what 0.3 is to this quite significant pretty much like a 25 percent decrease it's pretty intense actually she's getting a lot of buffs simultaneously but this is also coming at a time when i think uh astra is very powerful so it's not enough for the devs right now to just make viper powerful because people still won't pick her they still won't pick her because Astra is like this new flavored agent. They haven't seen her. They have no preconceived notions of like how good she is. Whereas everyone has a preconceived notion that Viper shit, her utility will never be good. And eventually that's not going to be the case because the devs just keep buffing it. So eventually there's going to be a corner that we turn and Viper is going to be really, really, really good. It hasn't happened yet, but I think this update might be the one. Practice tools. In custom games with cheats on and infinite abilities enabled, Viper can hold down activate on Poison Clan Toxic Screen to recall them. Thank God, dude. You guys have seen me in a, in a practice server with Viper. It's a pain in the ass. It is a huge pain in the ass before this update. So this is actually fantastic. Just for quality of life. It's available to them, right? So if they don't increase the speed of Viper's kit, she's fucking worthless. Like, she's literally worthless. And that's what we've seen a lot when we watch her play in matches. The only exception being like in EU where when we see Vipers work, they have to be so fucking drilled. They have to be really drilled. They can't die early. Thank you. They have to know Thank wall you. lineups, Thank smoke you. lineups, snake bite lineups that they use in post plants. They have to know alt lineups. It's very difficult. And then they have to synergize that with like other abilities and avoid Sovas and avoid like it's weird. Like when you watch a Viper play in a pro setting, they have to know so much. They have to know a lot to be successful. So hopefully something like this kind of helps that out. Because when I watch some of the other agents, like, I don't know, like any duelist, like they don't have to know a lot, you know, like to have a lot of impact. But when you watch a Viper play this game, if they don't know anything, they're absolutely done. They're cooked with that agent. So I'll play then. Might just have to pick it up right next to me on the ground. Put it on right now. Yoru. <sighs> Yoru carries a fantasy that you've been excited to see through. But we believe a few restrictions have made it harder to access. Yeah, this fucking fantasy is a nightmare. Although Yoru is a unique duelist on the roster, both in pace and play style, we think he should, be, he should still be a strong contender for good compositions and want to ensure the value he offers to his team is more consistent throughout a match. These changes should push the needle, but we'll rapidly test some new changes to other parts of the kit, such as his fake out, to ensure Yoru players have the tools they need to succeed. Blindside, flash activation, decreased from 0.8 to 0.6 seconds. What I think this means is, for those of you that don't play Yoru a lot like me, and are probably winning your games unlike me, uh, the way Yoru's flash works is you throw it, and it's in that little ball, and then it hits the wall and it turns into like a blue, I don't know, like blue neon light that travels off the wall. Well, the enemy can't see it until it hits the wall. They don't see it when it's in its ball form. So the flash activation time, I would imagine that time is the time it takes the flash to pop once the little ball hits a wall and then does the thing, you know, whatever. So they're, they're lowering that time so it f pops flash faster so that you have less time to turn. Flash duration increased from 1.1 to 1.5 seconds. Huge buff. Huge fucking buff, dude. That's insane. So his flashes are significantly more powerful now. Like, that is, that's a serious increase, guys. Um, 
I I don't know. Because Euro is one of those agents where he can peak with his flashes a lot. So this is, uh, this is an interesting one to change. And we'll see how this plays out. These two changes could be very good for Yoru. Gate Crash E. Gate Crash is no longer refreshed on kills and instead replenished every 35 seconds. Hmm. That's kind of interesting. So it works like a Sova Dart or something. I kind of like the, the kills thing. It's just, just thinking about this a little bit. Lifetime of the great, of Gate Crash Fragment increased 20 seconds to 30 seconds. I was thinking like if I could have two great gate crashes on the field at once, but you can't because it's 30 seconds versus 35 seconds. They made sure that probably couldn't happen. Uh, the range at which the gate crash fragment is revealed from stealth decreased from 7 meters to 4 meters. This is actually very important because I feel like every motherfucker always sees or hears my gate crash. Always. Visuals for visibility range added to the moving fragment. Revealed from stealth. Does this mean also sound chat? Or is this just vision? Is it sound and vision or just vision? Because the sound is super loud. It's very loud. Uh, dimensional drift, which is yours all. It has been decreased from seven to six alt points. And uh, your can now reactivate gate crash while in dimensional drift. I mean, you can you could kind of like already do that, but they must have just made it easier. Killjoy, Nano Swarm. Killjoy can now pick up deployed Nano Swarm grenades during the buy phase to get the charge back. Yeah, I feel like she probably should. Have, that's like a quality of life update. She probably should have already had that. Not sound. Sound is the same. So sound is the same. Vision is the only thing that changed. Like, remember that last game when I threw my gate crash and it went through the A side on bind into like the spawn hallways and the killjoy was like backside and I, I didn't TP because I was like, I guarantee the killjoy is just watching it. And then the jet was also there somewhere. But that killjoy, she probably didn't see my gate crash. She probably heard it go by her in U Haul and then just went to go camp it. I don't think the vision thing is a problem. I think the sound thing is very, very loud. You can very rarely use the gate crash effectively to like entry onto places in higher elos i'm not saying it's impossible but it's just very readable and i mean the fact that the gate crash can be broken like people could literally shoot it and break it so that is a, a huge problem in my eyes in using the gate crash aggressively um because it the options for the defenders are a plenty, right? They could camp the gate crash, they could break the gate crash, they could ignore the gate crash. Like they are always in control, it feels like, of your own ability. And that's kind of a problem, right? Like when you use a powerful ability like this, you want to feel like you're in control. But ultimately, when you use the gate crash, you you're always kind of rolling the dice. You're rolling the dice like it's like every, it would be like every time you use the jet dash that you had to go towards someone. Like it was only active if you went towards someone, right? Like, that's why you always see me use, using the gate crash passively, like, to rotate around the map. It's because, like, it's so whack. It's so loud, dude. It's so loud. Like, how am I supposed to use this effectively? I don't know. Anyway, weapon updates. Bucky. We want to focus the Bucky more on its actual primary firing mode. Left click and make that the strength you should try to optimize when choosing a Bucky versus its alternate firing mode. Right click. Hmm. The right click should be more of a tool you can use when you can't get into that effective left click range or you just need some reliable chip damage. The spreads are reduced on both to increase reliability and smooth the damage curve. The alt fire's significant reduction in pellet count is a trade-off to being able to extend the range as as much as it does for shock. Wait, what? The alt fire's significant reduction in pellet count is a trade-off. Oh, did they increase the distance or something? What does that mean? Prime primary fire left click bullet spread decrease three point four to two point six. So basically, like your bullets just aren't going like everywhere; they're going in the compact area. Honestly, this might I might be slightly a buff for a for the left click. This this is like a huge buff for the left click. Uh, decrease spread on alt fire right click right click. <laughs> Jesus Christ, my mouth is so dry. Bad again. Hmm. 
Hmm. Yeah, so decrease spread on alt fire. Right click. 3.4 to 2.0. Updated damage curve for both primary and alt fire. 0 to 8 meters is 20 damage per pellet. 8 to 12, 12 damage per pellet. Beyond 12, 9 damage per pellet. Thank God. Thank God. I think uh, I think this is a good enough nerf. The left click will still be good. The left click will be good. But we won't have people fucking right clicking me from like inside hookah to outside of hookah anymore. Thank God. Like the a shotgun was never meant to fucking do that, dude. Never. Like that is insane that that was in the game. Reduced the amount of pellets in a right click shot from fifteen to five, which is like the biggest killer of the right click in my opinion because then you go from five shots times nine you only have fucking 45 damage you know like that's that's nothing you're not going to take fights beyond 12 meters for 45 damage a shot like that's four shots to kill a 150 hp person that's crazy so this is a massive nerf to the right click in based on the form it was in game mode updates escalation We've taken a pass on a couple abilities to add depth to the gameplay and create some more dynamic combat situations as well as added some spicy loadout variations to the mix. Abilities. Raises showstopper comes with two blast pack charges which refill when you touch the ground. Holy shit, dude, they refill. Snowball launcher now comes with skates. Hell yeah, dude. Big knife. What does that mean? Big knife comes with one tailwind charge. What is big knife? Loadout variations will be a bit of a surprise and they'll show up rarely. Competitive updates. You can now view a person's career from in-game leaderboard. We heard some of you asking for the ability to view more info around how the best of the best were doing in their games. So you can now right click on the leaderboard entry and view their career to check out their match history, see details of their games and look at their act rank progress. If you are on the leaderboard but don't want to give away who you are, you can leverage our in-client toggle to, to label yourself a secret agent. That's pretty dope. So if you don't want people to know who the hell you are, you can basically activate like some kind of privacy feature and uh, you won't show on the leaderboard. Some people just... Uh, I don't blame them, blame them, right? Like that's that's for say like... Uh, I don't know. You guys said Hayes earlier did this so like that would be like if Hayes wanted to play ranked late night he didn't want to stream he didn't want anyone fucking bothering him he didn't want any of that shit so he could just load on like you know streamer mode and do this shit and no one would ever be able to know who he is he just play his game so it encourages stuff like this encourages uh, probably like more support players that are pros or even like some of the top pros to play because they can have an element of privacy. Like, they don't have to worry about getting bugged. And that's probably the main reason why this is in the game. Quality of life. To improve legibility, the Mega Map. Mega Map now consistently uses a mouse pointer instead of a crosshair for map pings. Mega Map. Is that when you click M? What the fuck is the Mega Map? I guess like the mini map is in the top of your screen. The mega map would be like when you click M and the fucking big map comes out. I've never heard it called that though. That's a good name for it actually. <laughs> I just called it the map. I'm just looking at my map. I didn't think uh, I had giga map. Head related transfer fun. Is that what HRTF stands for? Yikes. I never knew that. Even coming from CS. Uh, what direction did those raised footsteps come from? Is she moving from in front or behind of you? Which, with HRTF on and a pair of headphones, you'll be able to better pinpoint other players based on certain sounds. Yeah, this is actually true. So in like old versions of CS, you could do this. Uh, I don't know if it works anymore, but if you load up like an old game and you, you just close your eyes and you have someone come in the server with you, and they run directly in a straight line from like behind you up to your body. And then they run in a straight line from your body in front of you. It is, I don't even think it's possible to know the difference between the two back in the day. Like I tested this in 1.6. I, I, I mean, I was very young. It was a long time ago, but um, this was pre HRTF. You couldn't even distinguish like what was in front of you and behind you. So you, you would just be like, you would figure it out based on, I don't know, just context clues about what the fuck is going on. 
Yeah. I don't know if that's how Valorant was before. This didn't feel like it was that bad, but that was like a 1.6 thing back in the day. HRTF processing relies on a profile that contains measurements such as head size and ear shape, among other things. This implementation uses a profile based on a single set of measurements and may not feel natural at first to all listeners, depending on how closely the profile matches their own measurements. We encourage users to give HRTF a few tries as it may take some getting used to. Focused ear training outside a high pressure game environment may pay off in better ability to interpret the HRTF processing. We suggest a custom game or training for this. Watch our video demo below. And I guess they give you a demo on like how the fuck to use it. Added an audio toggle. We'll get it in the audio set settings panel to enable HRTF. HRTF allows players wearing headphones to play audio in a simulated surround sound audio space. Whew. I'm going to use it. Uh, when it first came out in CS, it was a little wonky. It was buggy. But then, you know, after a couple months, everyone was using it. Everyone. So Thank this is you. an insane Thank update you. to the audio Thank of the you. game. And... I think it's only a matter of time before the vast majority of players in this game end up using this. I'm not saying it's not going to be wonky. I haven't tested it. I have no idea what it feels like. But just my experience with it in CS, uh, it took some time. Like they say, they actually are very aware that it's going to take time. And it's going to sound weird. It's going to sound awful. You're not going to be used to it. Uh, that's the one thing I'll say. But over time, you'll just have a better sense of where people are on the map. Uh, I I don't know. Like I thought when they they uh, buffed Yoru, it would be. I guess I don't know what I expected. It's definitely a really good buff. It's a really good buff to Yoru. I guess I've just kind of fallen out of love with him based on how he's treated me and ranked lately. And I should just keep pushing forward. Yeah, I, th I think it's a fucking great update. Because without a drastic buff to Viper, guys, I'm telling you, we would see her fade out of this game so quick with astra in it like viper was like the cheeky against the grain pick already with like omen and brimstone and brimstone was like kind of like falling out before his last buff so i feel like they just have to keep throwing buffs at the ones that they aren't really seeing played a lot i really like some of their approaches here with viper like, this is something I never even thought of. The 50, 50 decay. It's a really good idea. And then the practice tool stuff is huge. This is a really cool update. Uh, you think they should have given him three flashes? I don't know, man. It's weird because they're like on the verge of making Yoru OP, but it's in a way that like I might not want to play him, which is so weird. It's so weird. Like I thought we would, uh, I thought they would um, do something to the sound of the gate crash. That was my big issue with Yoru is the sound, right? Like, but his kid is so fun. I'll probably still play him. See how it goes. Just farm orbs and get my dimensional drift. Am I worried about the Viper changes are leading to a fast pace and I'm trying to slow the pace? No. I think, um, I mean, they for now, they definitely need to match the game. I think there's a lot of a lot of issues about, like, the whole pace of the game and where agents like, like, slower agents, like Killjoy, Viper... You know, Brimstone, previously, like, potentially even Yoru. Um, any agent that is a little bit slower. You know, like, Viper requires some time. Cypher requires some time for people to come into you. Killjoy requires some time for people to come into you. Any agent that requires people to come into you feels like they're uh, kind of at a disadvantage. So, in order to kind of, like, even out that advantage, they need to make the utility stronger or something because the agents with like fast movement abilities like jet reyna rays um even omen to an extent like these agents all have abilities to like move around the map quickly get out of people's like molotovs and all kind of shit like out of people's alts they can they have so much craziness available to them right 
they're kind of trying to balance that out a little, I think, and we'll see how it goes. Honestly, I think it's pretty good. We'll see. The Bucky thing is huge. Like, thank God that gun needed to get nerfed. This is the the best thing in the patch, in my eyes.